Before stepping away from my old Tyranids to build out my Firekeeper's army, I was in the midst of creating a conversion for Biovores, as I love the concept of spore mines and spore mine launchers, but I kinda hate GW's Biovore model. <laughs> this was the design I was going with. I had extra Tyranid warrior bodies, and I had Hive Guard arms since I opted to build that kit as Tyrant Guard instead. Fast forward to the present. After a bit of inspiration and defining the themes and vision I wanted for my nids, I decided to revive them. And so picking up where I left off with that Biovore conversion, I figured I would peruse the interwebs for alternate directions for the conversion. And when I stumbled upon this, it felt like I found gold. This design right here by Ian is one I find to be perfect. It nails the alien horror vibe that comes to my mind when I think about large killer sci-fi space bugs and I just so happened to have the necessary parts. So I took a stab at going about this conversion, and I couldn't be happier with the results. And since I need to build another two, I figured I may as well make a video and share the process. So with the context out of the way, let's build better biovores. Step 1. Torso and Head Assembly Step 1 is to assemble the Venomthrope shell and glue in the head. The kit is designed so the head protrudes forward, but the designed aesthetic of the conversion is for the shell to be rotated forward and the head to be sunken in, protected by its shell. Before moving on, check to ensure the positioning is satisfactory relative to the ground plane. Step 2. Cannon Mount Next, we're going to mount the cannon on the shell, positioned above the last venom sac. It can be mounted with any type of glue, but given the lack of surface area, I've opted to pin it in place as well. And with the cannon mounted on top, it's time to fix up the bottom of this creature. Step 3. Neck Joint Cover Covering up the bottom of the body will be the large adrenal gland placed like this in between the head cavity and the space for the legs, which may require some trimming. Really, you can cover up the neck joint with any odd part, and since this connection point offers less surface area than I would like, I'll use sprue glue to add material which also serves to bond the parts. If you are unfamiliar with sprue glue, it's basically made by dissolving bits of sprue into plastic glue. In addition to covering up the neck joint and adding anatomy to the bottom of this creature, this step also serves in creating an anchor point for the scything talon legs. Step 4. Hive Guard Arms Next, we have a fork in the process. This is due to the Hive Guard Arms requiring to be anchored, which then dictates the positioning of the scything legs. So if you have opted for the medium scything talon arms instead, skip on to step 5 and add the arms in there. In this step, we'll be gluing the Hive Guard Arms to the Venomthrope's forward arm sockets. When doing so, I recommend dry fitting the parts relative to the ground plane to ensure you get the angle you want. Step 5. Scything Limbs Now it's time to build out the scything talon legs. This is an organic process. I start with taking a dollop of sprue glue coating the base cavity, where all four legs will be situated. Then one by one, the four scything talons are set in place. And then more sprue glue is added as needed. If you went with the hive guard arm route in the previous step, you can set the model down, as those arms will act as the primary support. This allows you to play with the position of the scything legs as the sprue glue dries. Step 6. The Tail Next is the tail. Take that Venomthrope arm and snip it where it begins to look like a whip. Then, using more sprue glue, add the tail in between the rear two scything legs. Step 7. The Base From here, we're going to glue this guy down. Doing this will make the subsequent green stuff steps much easier, as we will have something to hold the model when we push against it while sculpting. Just make sure you give your plastic glue enough time to establish a strong bond. Step 8. Cannon Accessories The bottom spike can be glued into position pretty easily after snipping off the connecting tube from the Stranglethorn Cannon. But the side panels I found to be difficult to hold into position as there is very little surface area so I resolved to adding more surface area through using green stuff. Don't worry if the connection doesn't look natural, as it will be refined later in the green stuff steps. Step 9. Spore Sacks 
Once this bug is relatively secure, it's time to create the spore sacks. And to be perfectly honest, you don't need to be a master sculptor for this. Here's the breakdown. Mix your green stuff. Make a ball-like shape. Pull the material from the top so it looks more like a sack which would hold a spore mine. And then put it in place. Then you want to try and smooth out any fingerprints. You want to get them smooth. So smooth that if a lady happens to see them, her reaction should be, Oh my god, those balls are as smooth as eggs. So you make a bunch of them and start placing them down. I recommend offsetting the position when moving up with each layer. Step 10. Top carapace. When the spore sacks have been built up enough, we can dry fit our top carapace pieces. Ironically, you want these parts to be wet for the dry fit, so they don't stick to the green stuff and muck up your work. If it's not sitting in a shape you like, either add or remove some green stuff until it begins to look good. If it's looking good, remove those pieces and with a sculpting tool of your choice, blend the green stuff surrounding the cannon into it. And then add those carapace pieces back in. Step 11. Green stuff odds and ends. Once the spore sacks have cured, we can use a bit more green stuff for the final touches. We can blend the cannon opening with those panels we placed previously. We can add some smaller sacks or some pores to the lower arm sockets. And fill in any other necessary gaps. And if you like the look, you can roll thin pieces of green stuff to create veins for those spore sacks. If so, I'd recommend using references. And with that, we're done. All that's left now is to do this guy's base and he's ready for painting. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Ian for coming up with this awesome Biovore design. Check him out on Instagram at Nocturnal Brush and on Reddit. Links in the description. And of course, a special thanks to my patrons, Julius Maximus, as well as the others who help keep the dream alive. So, if you enjoyed this video, there's a like button. And if you want to help my channel grow, there is a subscribe button. There's also a bell button and a share button, so press the buttons you want to press. And with that, I hope to see you guys in the next one.